the dude that I was with. He got mad at me for not calling him when I was done and having my sister pick me up. So then when my sister dropped me back off at the hotel we were staying at, he just like beat the crap out of me because it didn't go how it was supposed to. He backhanded me, busted my top tooth through my bottom leg. So then I didn't want to do it anymore, but then since my ad was still on Backpage, more people were calling that same night and he um, made me meet with them and he just drove me and waited outside so that I didn't get a different ride home. I just went straight back with him. Yeah, I always thought that when I heard about this stuff when I was younger that it would never be me. This doesn't go on here. This only happens in big metropolitan areas in New York City or downtown Los Angeles. We're isolated from that. We're a state full of tourism and agriculture. And my mind just went, I, I, this happens here? No, it's not supposed to happen here. Really did never give a thought to that happening here in our backyard in Montana. Not gonna lie, I, when I first heard about it, I'm like, really? I mean, this isn't really an issue. Eastern Montana, we're, you know, very, very sparsely populated. This doesn't really affect beer distributors. I don't know how we could help. And I also thought it doesn't happen in Montana. It isn't happening in other cities. It's not happening in other countries. It's, it's here. No longer bury your head in the sand about what this is. This is a real thing that is happening. It's happening here in Missoula. It's happening in smaller communities. It's happening in larger communities and it's happening all over. Human trafficking is happening. It is a crime once just whispered about, but not anymore. Sex trafficking is happening here in Montana and in our own communities. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security calls human trafficking modern day slavery. Traffickers use force to get labor or sex from their victims. And numbers show human trafficking is on the rise in Montana. Detective Guy Baker of the Missoula Police Department has worked on more than 60 cases since 2015. He's also a member of an FBI task force specializing in the matter. I, I really can't think of another criminality that has more misperception than sex trafficking. Everyone seems to think that it it only happens in other countries or big cities and other states, and they're just oblivious to what's going on here in Montana. These are all different websites that are providing escorts in Missoula right now. So, and that's no different for Billings or Bozeman. So she's visiting and available right now. You just have to call that number, but people don't realize that's as simple as it is to buy a girl. Unbelievable where there's any truck stop of any size, there's a market for commercial sex. And where there's a market for commercial sex, there's gonna be people that exploit women and pimps are gonna take their product to where they can make money. And so wherever you have truck stops of any size, you have prostitution. Out here, I know we've had kids try to run away. As a child, you don't have to travel with an ID if you're traveling with a parent. You know, that's where we need to be keeping our eyes out. They just go through the checkpoint with their parent and get on a plane and could be their pimp. So I've had a badge for uh, just over eight years. I was with the sheriff's office. I recall a, a call, I was just about to get off shift and I lived in the city of Missoula. The call came in for a, teenager or someone that looked too young that was trying to hitchhike was in my car got up on the interstate really quick at this point someone uh, had reported that a semi truck had just picked up this kid and i hurry up and caught the semi about tura and stopped it and found out that this was a minor who was running away but parents had no idea that this kid would just jump, jumped into a semi truck and was on her way to somewhere else in Montana with some guy that she'd never met before. Kind of the proof I needed. This girl had talked to some people on the internet and she was gone. It was the matter of hours that she'd found a ride. And if we didn't stop her, who knows where she'd be? 
this generation of our youth is very unique. They've been raised with the internet. These people that exploit kids are obviously using the internet uh, to find the kids oftentimes. Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, I mean, there's all these points of reference for younger people now. Likes are so important to them and they get messages in their inbox and people are grooming them in a sense, getting them to trust them. Everybody has a need, right? And what these traffickers are really good at doing is identifying the need that he or she has and fulfilling that need. Maybe they're in a home where I love you is in a regular phrase or they don't get told they're beautiful. So if that role can be filled by somebody else, they're in complete control. Maybe he says initially it's just going to be dancing or stripping and she doesn't have to do anything she doesn't want to, but once he can get her into that, then the commercial sex aspect is going to quickly follow. These people are in a truly, truly terrible position, and uh, this mentality that they're just prostitutes, that's the oldest profession in the world, uh, that really bugs me because no female aspires to become a commercial sex worker. Not one has chose to wake up fearful of their life and fearful of what has to happen and be sold 20 or 30 times in a day. Not one. The average age that a child is sold in to forced prostitution is for a girl, um, you know, the, the 12 to 14. If that girl is sold in to forced prostitution at that time, by the time she is old enough to get her driver's license, she has most likely been forced to have sex for money over 12,000 times. These are our most vulnerable young people. And so to not um, be so judgmental of them, these are our sisters, our daughters. That's what I hope people understand. It's no secret the generational trauma that Native Americans have grown up with and been a part of each generation. And, and I hate to say it because I am Native American, I work for the tribe, and you know, but it's, it's definitely a problem amongst you know, ourselves. Um, just the parenting and the, you know, the stable homes are just aren't there. You know, there's too, too much high percentage where, we, where we're addicted to stuff and, and, you know, and it's, whether it's drugs or alcohol and it's, a lot of it's just tied to the, the generational trauma stuff. But I mean, you know, realistically, it's just, it's a lot of, of choice. Reservations are really targeted because of the vulnerability Sadly, there are a lot of broken homes. There are a lot of kids that come from, you know, domestic violence. And there are a lot of kids that have gotten into drugs. It's, it's, it's a really scary thought because the vulnerable population is who is victimized. Identifying a problem, that's the easy part. Coming up with a solution, that's where the work begins. Enough testimony, enough, enough stories. What are we gonna do? How do we help? How do, what do we do? What's the next step? When we heard about this, our president, Mike Markovich, reached out to a group here in Missoula called the Lifeguard Group. I picked up the phone and I called a gentleman by the name of Lowell, Hulk Alter. Lowell, several years ago, formed the Lifeguard Group here in Missoula and he lives and breathes this stuff every day. We had our first meeting and he explained to me his interest. And it was more than just an interest. I could tell that there was a desire that had a, a backing of passion to, to actually see something done. The National Human Trafficking Hotline has heat maps for each state. And I took a look at just 2015 to 2018 and it was startling to see where these cases have been reported. What was even more powerful was taking all of the locations of our distributorships and overlaying that on this heat map and seeing that in every one of these hot spots, we have representation. So collectively, the beer and wine distributors employ about 1,300 people across the state. Well, our drivers and merchandisers are in over 3,200 retail locations throughout the state, 
Our drivers have access at different times and at different places than the general public would. They're in those convenience stores, at casinos, in the backs of bars. Our mission is to train each and every one of our employees on the signs to look for for human trafficking. We will come really close to doubling the police force in the state of Montana. We need those eyes out there and just the fact that you know you've doubled that it's it's phenomenal. We're already there. All we got to do is open our eyes and identify the signs of what we're seeing, report it, and there you go. Like I'm not in the back room of the restaurant. I don't I don't take the back hallway. I, I there's things that I can't see. There's things that law enforcement can't see. I think a route driver would be great helping out because you know, any day we're taking 25, 30 stops out. So it's, you know, in and out of these alleyways, these tiny towns in Montana, some, some places where, you know, other people don't really get the opportunity to go to every day, we're in. So it's just more bodies and eyes. I think before it was in the back of everybody's heads, you know, nobody's really paying attention, looking for it. But if we provide everybody with the knowledge and information on uh, you know, what to look for and how to help these victims if we do see anything. We have the resources to do it. it kind of makes you feel good that you know, on top of everything else we do, we're able to take an extra step and help out. Our state's big. We have an awfully large state. So we realize the need to create and tailor a training program that's custom to Montana. And we wanna find out the local knowledge. What's going on at the local street level here? And we combine them together into one recipe that is a customized fit for our state, our geography, our people. But the training has to be good. That's the big thing. We only get one chance to be new. And that's why we're taking this so seriously and building out the program like we are. I really hope that us tailoring our program and customizing it the way we're going to, we can really open some eyes and really help some people out. So I, I just think it's super important to take the time to do this. Everybody says yes with open arms and they say, come on in, let us help. How do we get this done together? Our mission here with this initiative is to train all of our drivers, merchandisers, sales reps, even our office staff so they can be able to be trained to spot this happening. We have posters. We have signs that can be displayed in the bulkhead of a beer truck on the inside of the front box so that the drivers are seeing it. Right here with this phone number, you know, this 833-406-STOP, we also have this QR code that somebody can use either a, a QR code scanner on their cell phone or even just take out their camera. And boom, you're on with these guys on the other end. Um, another thing is if, you know, you have a new employee and part of the onboarding process, they can point their phone at this QR code and it's gonna show them the, the training film that we're putting together now. These are stickers. They can go up on windshields, they can go on dashboards, they can even go outside of the vehicle. And so that's gonna have those same two QR codes, the quick call QR and then the training video. These are kits, they're called freedom kits. These kits are designed so that if you spot a victim without a trafficker around, you can get these into their hands. One thing it does is it lets that victim know that there's somebody out there that cares about them, and it also provides a resource to them with the various hygienic products that are in the kit. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, one of the small details of this kit is intended to go unnoticed uh, until we hand it out and say, check out the chapstick. If a trafficker is to look at the kit, when they first glance, they're not gonna see anything wrong or suspicious with the kit. The Important information that's printed in fine print on the side of the chapstick contains information and resources that these victims can call to get help. If you don't know what to look for, you can be looking right at something and you truly don't see it for what it is, right? So again, here's, here's a ton of signs to look for. A lot of these things are typical. Um, and that'll help it stand out. If she's very leery to speak to you, if she's leery to answer any questions, you may spot a victim and they're hesitant to tell you what their name is because that changes all the time. 
Oh, you could say to them here in Bozeman, hey, how do you like Billings? I'd say, yeah, it's, it's really nice here. They, they have no clue That's a lot of times. If you just scan the room, try to make eye contact. Human trafficking victims will not make eye contact with you. If there's a lot of people in the room intentionally not making eye contact, they're intentionally looking down at the ground. A lot of times these victims are in pretty bad shape. Uh, you might see signs of physical abuse, things like bruises, scratches, and some of these victims look like they haven't eaten in days. Let's say at a truck stop, you see a young female who's maybe hanging out by the door that the truckers use to go to the showers, and she doesn't seem to be dressed for the weather. Maybe a skirt and high heels and, and looking young, who maybe is a missing person or a runaway from somewhere. What is she doing in this truck stop in the middle of Montana? Another huge red flag is branding via tattoos. So a lot of times you'll see either a crown or maybe the word daddy, and sometimes it's another name. And then you have a guy that's, you know, girl standing behind him all the time and he's paying for everything and he's in control of everything. You know, she has no control of anything. They don't have control of any of their personal things. Somebody else does that for them and answers for them. It's just paying attention. And, and seeing, and once you know what to look for, you'll see it. You don't have to start peering around in the dark. It's, it's in plain sight. It's right there. With the Lifeguard Group, we felt very strongly that the national hotline, which is held in New Jersey, just wasn't adequate enough for the time to possibly be able to rescue somebody from human trafficking. So the great thing about the hotline that the drivers are going to be using is that it's a local Montana hotline. This is super important for us. The main reason is, is speed of understanding where they're at, the geographical locations, the weather challenges that often come their way in the winter. I mean, it is literally the difference between a rescue and, and, and never finding that kid. In those situations, an hour is a lifetime. The hotline will be manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There will never be a minute that the hotline doesn't have a volunteer answering the phone. It's important to be a good witness, so if you can get a license plate number or a description or anything that would help law enforcement. You're going to call the hotline. From there, a volunteer is going to answer that phone and they're going to ask you a series of questions. At that point, your information that you were given to the hotline volunteer will be taken by our team and dispersed to the local entities there where you may have seen uh, such thing take place. Uh, we can't have enough set of eyes out there to help law enforcement. And it's important to remember that we don't want you to get involved personally where you might get hurt but we do need you to be a good witness and document what you see and report that to law enforcement. Be a good scout, be a good witness, and let the cavalry come in and make the arrest and deal with the people. But we need to hear from you first, so don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, I was 19 when I met him. So I was here in Missoula downtown just kind of right over here in a parking lot. I was with two other friends and he brought a friend and he instantly gravitated towards me. He knew I was broken. I was broken before I met him and he knew that. I haven't had a lot of guys who were emotionally there for me um, and so he filled that role. Uh, in my gut I knew something was wrong. He called it escorting. Uh, he asked me and I thought he was joking. And so, you know, he said, if you love me, you'll do it. I went to multiple um, walk-in clinics to get tested. Um, and I just wish, you know, that they would ask if I'm okay. But then they kind of look at me and then they wouldn't, they wouldn't go any further. And I just wish that somebody would have really been like, are you sure? And then in 2016, um, he was arrested. The, those FBI agents saved my life because I was done with living with all of this and being his pawn. 
they intervened in the time that if they wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here today. Um, yeah, when I walked up, it was, brought up a lot of emotions being here. But actually, standing here, it feels good in a way, because he doesn't have that power anymore. I mean, it's difficult, but it's... I think of it as it's worth it in the end, because it's bigger than me. I think now, if you feel something in your gut, just listen to it, ask a question. When something is off, when we walk in and we can just tell people are acting strange, especially as a, as a delivery person or a driver, you have normal human interactions on a regular basis. And when something stands out to you and your gut starts going off, some people will call it intuition, jump into that, lean into that. This is probably nothing. Well, probably nothing could also be something big, could be someone's life. It's not a waste of our time to call and have us check something out, you know. I know everybody down here is more than willing to go and check things out. No call is a wrong call. If you think that you saw something that doesn't feel right, there's this gut instinct that I truly believe will guide you. If you feel that in your gut and there's something that's telling you that what you saw was not what's supposed to be happening, pick up the phone and call. But if you feel something and you don't make that phone call, you could potentially have lost a life there. I mean, it's unbelievable how much that helps us and so kudos to you guys out there and gals doing this um, and being the eyes and i would ask for you to just put yourself in that situation what if this was my niece what if this was my daughter what if this was my son what would i want to have happen all i'm asking you to do is look for her like you would look for your own child we wanted these guys to know we're here with you we can be more boots on the ground to the tune of 1,300 more people who are keeping their eyes open. This is a big, huge win in the fight against human trafficking. This is another boots on the ground way to show these victims and these survivors that we are truly here with them fighting to end this monstrosity. And we want to make it known in the human trafficking world that Montana is off limits to this type of crime. I have a lot of pride in knowing we're a family here in Montana and we look out for our own. Anything to get more awareness out there is, is huge. And so to hear that a company is doing this, uh, I mean, I couldn't be more proud because it's, it's something that needs to have light shed on it and it needs everybody to be aware of what's going on. For them, not only to recognize the issue, but to also step up and say, hey, how can we help? I really acknowledge them for stepping up and wanting to be a part of the solution. I want to empower our drivers and merchandisers so that they now realize they have a higher sense of purpose. They now can identify and potentially save a life. How do you put a price on that? I've heard more than one of them say, if I can save just one life, this whole effort will have been worthwhile. We know that they're moms and dads. They're community members. It's bigger than a job. Their job is gonna give them an opportunity to save a life. Many of them don't know yet, but they will cross paths with an individual and they will be the catalyst to save her life. Just to know that somebody else is looking, to be able to feel the passion and knowing that you're not just looking haphazardly, but looking with passion and intent and the same heart that we would look. I think it's become apparent that our drivers and merchandisers who have been exposed to this notion and, the, and this effort um, are very excited to help out. And now it's their opportunity to step out and really be a help. With what we're doing, we are going to save a life at some point. With this partnership and this relationship, this could be the beginning of the end. Please call. Please call. Please call. Please call. Please call. Please call.
Well, our top story tonight at 6, Montana's Attorney General just announced the Sentinel Project. And it's been born to fight human trafficking in the state through those who know Montana roads the best. It trains all beer and wine distribution employees on how to look for signs of human trafficking on the roads. They are eyes and ears on Montana's highways and have access to locations often unseen by the public or law enforcement officers. Human trafficking is a heinous crime, but we have something to celebrate here today. A great new partnership between the Montana Department of Justice, the Montana Beer and Wine Distributors Association, the Lifeguard Group of Missoula, and the Montana Association of Chiefs of Police. We're the fourth largest state. We only have 240 troopers on and off duty to patrol these highways. And so it's important for everybody to work together to help combat this problem. When our people are properly trained to identify those signs of trafficking, we're coming close to doubling the size of the police force in the state of Montana. Partnering with organizations like this association and the Lifeguard Group is a resource multiplier and puts more eyes and ears on the ground. The Montana Beer and Wine Distributors Association members service more than 3,200 accounts and can be the eyes and ears to fight human trafficking on Montana's highways and streets. We are in the back rooms of the bars. We are in the coolers. Grocery stores, restaurants, bars, as well as Montana's Indian reservations. Native American women and girls are more susceptible to trafficking than any other group in Montana. According to federal statistics, Native women and girls account for less than 4% of Montana's total population, but account for almost 40% of our state's human trafficking cases. I'm a tribal council member for the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes. As a community, we are so fortunate to have people like Lowell and the Lifeguard Group, the Montana Beer and Wine Distributors Association, and our Montana Attorney General stepping up in this joint effort to help those most impacted. They have to transport it around the state. They're on our interstates where these human traffickers are operating. And if it reaches through and, and saves at least one person, it's all worth it. And so those are the things that we want you to take away from today is that yes, there are the statistics, but there are the victories. And today it is my extreme pleasure and honor to introduce to you one of those survivors. Here is Brittany, my hero. I am from Missoula, Montana, and I want people to know that human trafficking is happening whether they want to believe it or not. I'm here today to tell you that I am a survivor and I found my voice again. Let's bring Montana to the forefront of this fight. Let's be an example to the nation as we join arms and join efforts and make a very loud statement that our children are protected, that our children are safe because we've come together on purpose. A message from the Montana Beer and Wine Distributors Association.